What is valid service of process when you're sued for debt? Brought to you by YourLegalLegUp.com, your advantage if you're being sued by debt collectors. This question comes up a lot, and I have probably addressed it before, this question of whether service um, of process is valid. But for this set of videos, I want to give it a shorter, sweeter answer. Bear in mind that service of process is the way a court asserts jurisdiction over you. Process is not the lawsuit, it's the summons, the sheet of paper from the court. And service is the way it's given to you. If it isn't done correctly, the court lacks power to control your fate. As you'll see, the method itself isn't some sort of absolute constitutional requirement. Service is constitutionally required, but it can, but the way it's done can vary under circumstances of practicality. And we'll discuss some of those here. If you're in small claims court, there may be special rules regarding service of process. There often are. For example, service by certified mail or even just first class mail may be sufficient. If you receive a summons by mail, you should look up the court's rules on service. Sometimes, even if service by mail is acceptable, there may need to be some sort of proof uh, that you actually received it. Check your rules and see if what you got was good enough. Obviously, you don't want to call the court, identify yourself, and ask if receiving service by mail is good enough since that would be admitting you got it. If you're being sued in something other than small claims court, it's probably going to take more than just the mail. They're probably going to have to hand you the suit or offer to do so. Here again, the rule is not absolute. If they offer you the summons and you refuse it or run away, you will have been served. It isn't necessary for you to take it for the service to have happened, just for it to be offered. And you certainly don't have to consent to the court's jurisdiction for it to have power over you. Don't be fooled by internet commenters. But what if they tack the summons on your door or put it between the screen door and your front door? That's normally not going to be good enough since there's no certainty that you will be the one getting it. But if it happens, you'll want to research the question before deciding it wasn't good enough. Learn to depend on your own research and analysis. Incidentally, if we're talking about a foreclosure or rent eviction, something involving specific property, tacking the suit to the door might be enough to get jurisdiction over the property itself, even if not over you personally. That would mean that they could evict you if you don't answer, but they couldn't hold you liable if there's anything else owed after they sell the property. Uh, what about if they give the summons to a neighbor? Probably not enough. Check your state's rules and possibly it's a violation of the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act, the FDCPA, too. How about giving it to your child at the door? This, too, is going to be determined by state rule. Most states have specific rules that allow service upon residents at a place who are a certain age or above. So ordinarily, that would not give a visitor the right to accept service on you or a child under that certain age. If you haven't been served adequately, you may wish to oppose the court's jurisdiction over you. I actually usually suggest you hire a lawyer to do that for you since it's more likely to succeed and can be done without being tremendously expensive. You would file what's called a motion to quash service to have it deemed ineffective by the court. If the court grants that, it doesn't dismiss the suit, they just make the plaintiff try to serve you again. But this could be a big issue for them. It's worth doing. What if they can't find you or reach you at home? There are other ways you can be served, but usually the plaintiff has to ask for permission to do that. They could serve you by publication, for example, which means posting notice in some legal publication. And since no one ever reads those publications, you wouldn't see that. But if you're aware they're trying to reach you, you should follow the court's docket to see if they ask for permission to serve you that way. If so, and the court gives them permission to do that, you're probably going to want to go ahead and waive service and ask them to send you the summons and complaint by mail. But it's quite rare for debt collectors to take all the trouble to serve by publication for a very good reason. If they can't find you to serve you, they're not likely to be able to find your assets to collect on them either. Everybody in the debt collection business likes to get paid, and if they don't think they will be, they usually won't put in the effort. 
And you can see, I generally think, as you can see, I generally think the debt collectors should have to put in the effort to serve you. If they can't get that done, there isn't much reason for you to make it easier for them. They might drop the suit completely. They have plenty of others they can sue, and it's pretty much all the same to them. So I'd give them that a chance. I'd give them that chance. And that's something we'd call a win for you. Helping people protect their rights is what we do. Protect what's yours and don't let the debt collectors rip you off. Your legal leg up dot com.